Now we've talked about the benefits of using masks when you're editing your photos and specifically we've taken a look at Lightroom Classic for that in the past and that's what we're going to do today but we're going to look at one specific mask type that we've not really talked much about and actually it's very very useful and a really powerful tool. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, we're going to dive into Lightroom Classic. We're going to look at one specific mask type that we've not talked about that much. And actually, it's incredibly useful. Let's dive in. Now, we're going to look at a few different photos. We're going to start with this one. We're looking at the objects mask. And this is so handy for a variety of different tasks, right? A few different things you might want to do within your photo. It's just going to make your life a lot easier and the workflow, oh, so much quicker. Let's take a look at it. So this photo here, for example, we might come up here to the masking panel. And if I was to click subject, it's going to select the squirrel. There we go. It's going to select the squirrel and a few of these branches up here. That's fine. Now that's all good. And that is really helpful. But what if we want to mask out this branch here? Well, let's delete that mask now. And there's a few options, right? We could go and use a brush and we could just paint on to this. You know, that's not too bad. And actually this, this branch isn't too difficult to do that with, but it's not very precise and it's not maybe ideal. So let's delete that mask as well. Let's come down to the objects mask. Now this is super useful for this kind of thing, right? Any object in your scene, really anything at all in the photo, you can mask out really quickly really easily. So I've got a similar thing here. I've got a brush. All I'm going to do is just brush onto the edges of this branch. You can see I'm not being particularly, not being particularly precise. Lyra's like going to work out what I've done there. Look at that. Look at how precise and spot on that is. And then I can go ahead and start masking this out, doing things, doing whatever I want really. And what's lovely about this is you can really mask out anything in the scene. You can add and subtract from it as well. So for example, we've done that. Maybe I want to get just the rest of this branch here. I come up here to add objects and I'm just going to just going to brush in like that. Look at that. Look at how well it's masked around the squirrel's tail. That is absolutely ideal. Now, what's great about that is it allows you to have a lot of control over individual small elements in the scene that might otherwise be a little bit mm, a little bit tricky to mask by hand. So, for example, in this photo, I might want to actually just darken this element on the left here, which is perhaps a little bit distracting. Well, I can come over here. Let's go create new mask. Let's go objects. Let's just draw onto this now. So a little bit like this. I'm not taking my time over it. I'm just, I'm just brushing on like so. There we go. Let's see how Lyrum does that. Really nice. So it's not taking this top bit because it's worked out that it's kind of two different objects. Let's go ahead and add objects. Let's do that. Lovely. And now I could darken that down a little bit just to make it maybe a little bit less distracting from the photo. Let's even add objects. Let's just do this bottom part here. Beautiful. Look at that. And it just, it just removes that slightly distracting element from the photo. And how quick and easy is that? To mask out. Now, if we come back to this photo, I want to show you something really cool that we can do with this mask. Now, we've looked at this before with other mask types, but I think it works really well. So, this branch, for example, we've masked this out, right? We've got that mask in the bag. But what if we want to darken the bottom part of this branch, right? So, we want to actually really make the shadow at the bottom much more intense. So, all we have to do in this situation is come up to mask one. Let's click on the three dots, intersect mask with. Let's go linear gradient. And now when I draw this on, you'll see the linear gradient is now only applying to where the object mask was, right? So I can draw this on. I can see it visually. If you can't see that, you just press O to make the mask visible. And you can see that that is just applying to the branch. So we can apply a feathered linear gradient mask like this to the bottom of this branch, darken that down. Lovely. Look at that. And we just really darken the shadow on the branch just using the object mask and a linear gradient mask. How easy is that? The workflow is unbelievably quick and easy. The, the just quality of life is so good. And it's actually one of the masks that's not going to come up in every edit, right? It's not necessary in every photo. I won't use it as much as I'll use a radial gradient or maybe a linear gradient, but I will use it 
a lot. Now, product photography is another area where this can be really useful. So for example, I've got this photo of a watch. Let's go ahead and create a new object mask. Now I could use this to actually just mask out the strap. So for example, just draw on here. Again, not being super precise, but Lightroom works it out. It does a great job actually of just working it out. I'm adding the other part of the strap. There we go. Now what I could do here is maybe I want to boost the brightness. Maybe I want to bring the clarity down a little bit so that it just sort of blends a little bit better. Maybe I want to bring the dehaze up a little bit. Maybe I want to bring the contrast up a little bit. Maybe I'm just affecting the look like that. But maybe I want the watch face. Well, I could use a radial gradient. I could use a brush. But if I go objects, I can just do this. I've not done a super precise job, but Lightroom works it out. And then I'm able to just boost just the brightness of the watch face. It's such a useful mask type for lots of different situations like this. It'll help you fix problems, but it'll also help you just quickly mask out individual elements to adjust in whatever way you need to do it for the photo. Now that's a pretty quick tutorial this week, a pretty quick one, but it's one that I've been thinking about making for a little while because I think it's just, it's just super useful. But we've got some fun ones coming up for sure. We're gonna do some interesting stuff with editing, some practical stuff, but absolutely let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see. Let me know in the comments, because I always like to make the stuff that you guys wanna see. So let me know in the comments if there's a specific tutorial Tuesday that you would like to see in the future, and we'll do our best to get around to it. Otherwise, there's a full list of all the kit we use for these photos, for this video, all that fun stuff down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, because there's new stuff every week. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.